homosexuality and trans people are nothing new. I cannot stand those people that will see a trans person and go, the world is truly coming to get our trans denies to the youth. You see, the problem is that trans students have grown so accustomed to people being in the closet that they don't know how to function when it comes to people being out of the closet. Well, back in my day, we didn't have all of this. You did. You did. You were just naive, out of touch, uneducated, or all of the above. So I'm not here to convince you to be for or against the LGBTQI plus community. I'm just here to tell you to read a book because that community has history as well, well before the 2000s. <laughs> Welcome to Gay Talk 2.0, the ultimate podcast for your dose of dish. Uh, welcome back, ladies and gents, to another episode of Gay Talk 2.0, an LGBT podcast. We are streaming live and in color for our YouTube channel. For all of you Patreon supporters, today, welcome guest. Mark King, an award-winning blogger, author, speaker, and HIV activist who has been involved in HIV causes since testing positive in 1985. My name is Tom, and I am your host, and as always, I'm in the studio with my amazing co-host, starting with the first one. Hey, y'all, Nick or Trish. And Jay Bear, a.k.a. your boyfriend's boyfriend. And welcome you all to The Dish. So for our Patreon subscribers, you're probably wondering, okay, why does the live stream look different? Que pasa? <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's me just trying to figure out, um, you know, some of the different things that we wanted to try. You know, that would, we have all these cameras. Um, I did, you know, I, I thought it would be a really good idea that when we have guests on the show, like we're having Mark today, um, it would be really interesting to be able to bring them in mm -hmm. to the live stream so that we can interact with them and people and our listeners and viewers can actually see them as well. Yeah. So like you mentioned this to me and then I texted you when like Friday? Was yes. that Friday? I was like, yes. by the way, I think that's a great idea. And I just booked somebody for next Monday. And I was like, <laughs> oh my God, I went neurotic <laughs> all weekend testing, calling this one. Hey, can, can you test with me? Can you do this? Can you do this? They were like, Ugh, whatever, whatever. <laughs> the only person I didn't reach out, I think was you. You wouldn't have gotten hold of me anyway. Yeah, no, she was camping. She was out in the woods, scabbing. getting poison, scabbing and getting poison ivy uh, up her 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 booty hole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, proud of you. That's why I didn't sit down. So, so anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, today we're trying something new. So if we have difficulties and technical difficulties, I apologize in advance. We blame the intern. Yeah, we do. We always do. Right here, me. <laughs> Um, but anyway, uh, before we dive into anything, we need to rewind a little bit to last week's episode. So we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, we please. were talking about the fires in, in Maui. Oh, my God. Uh, Hawaii. Oh, Hawaii. Uh. And for whatever reason, I said Alaska and this one had deer into headlights, um, you know, Look. Yeah, that's why I was like, oh, my God, global warming in Alaska. Yeah, so she had to, like, go in and start, like, And then Jay's Googling. looking at me like, what is this bitch talking about? <laughs> and he's like, oh, but, you know, I'll back her up. I'll back her up, yeah. <laughs> so, see, th this is why I love I love this group because, you know, no matter what I throw at them, they just pivot. And, and that's, No, I'm sitting here, like, literally Googling like, oh, Alaskan wanna, wildfires. Maui, Maui Alaska? <laughs> I don't want to look is stupid. This, is this a subdivision of Anchorage? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Oh my God. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, so listen, it's not a laughing matter. What what happened in Maui, Hawaii is serious, right? Uh, wildfires, people lost their homes, an entire community literally decimated. Um, you know, the, they're still in the recovery efforts, et cetera. But it was nonetheless, it's a traumatic experience for those who've mm -hmm. experienced it. We what? didn't want to make light of that situation, but it was kind of fucked up that I just took us on a whole like different well i went on a journey for sure it, honey i took you both on a journey and then they were like at the end of the show you said alaska and i was like no i didn't and i went and watched the video again i was like oh fuck i'm sorry guys i did i did <laughs> mm -hmm. i admit it it was my fault and i'm sorry but we were talking about maui hawaii i'm glad we're recording this she admitted it i did I imagine now that. we have it on the video it's growing up oh, all right lord have kudos mercy. kudos so. can you say that one more time <laughs> i admit it i was wrong it wasn't maui alaska this bitch was googling it like uh, there isn't no maui alaska it was oh maui God. 
Hawaii. I felt so dumb. And that's why on the show I was like, actually, no, let's not talk about this because I don't want to sound dumb. <laughs> Hey. I but you know it, it was a, it was a laughing moment for us after right once we wrapped up the show and we realized oh my god we fucked up royally yeah um and and you know this only reinforces uh, Hans comment to me he sent me a personal comment one day <laughs> it's like you have like the worst sense of like geographical like sense yeah Alaska Hawaii right because I mean we were talking one day about a story and I can't remember what it was maybe it was England or something or. Just be careful. Something in Europe. He's listening. <laughs> and, um, and and he was like, oh, my God, your sense of direction is just, like, horrible. And I'm like, thanks, Hans. And, and this just reinforces that. So, you know, apparently everybody's right. So, and I'm okay with that. We have a you large know? blank wall up ahead. We might benefit from a world map. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jay Bird, um, you can whip out your gay talk your credit gay card talk. and get us a nice big map for us. Sure. As so. soon as you uh, Venmo me the money for okay, it. Okay, perfect. perfect, perfect. We'll, we'll, we'll get... Uh, Patreon, I'm our Patreon listeners. I'm right on that. top of that, Rose. <laughs> I'm right on top of that. So um, normally, um, I would ask, you know, we would do a quick roundtable to ask about how our weekends are. We're not going to do that today. Today, we're just going to pivot and we're going to talk about nonsense for the first half hour because our conversation for the second half hour is going to be very intense. Uh, at least I think uh, the individual that's coming that's joining us um, is uh, has been through it, to say the least. So we're going to try to, you know, just pivot and do something different. So my question to you guys, uh, are you guys on now? Uh, Chris, yes, we are. Oh, my God, <sighs> if he calls. Yeah. No. So anyway, so the question that I have you for, I, I fix it on fingers for a very long time and i want you to go back in in your mental history and think about stingers that you think are just absolutely insanely crazy amazing um and and why and tell me why you think the singer is just the person that really stands out for you out of all the singers in the world so um jaybird let's start with you why don't you go first silence of okay. course well why why don't we ruminate on that Okay. What What do you mean, ruminate? Like, just like think about it for okay. a minute. Okay. And then I'm gonna quiz you guys. Oh, quiz, oh, you guys. quiz. It's okay. Time. Go, Trish. Okay. So, what city released an ad begging LGBTQ plus tourists to visit despite its state's anti LGBTQ plus laws? One, Boise, Idaho. Two, Austin, Texas. Or three, or Florida. Four, Jackson, Mississippi. I'm going to say Orlando. Florida. It's definitely Florida. That is correct. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Can you imagine that? <clears throat> what reason did the International Chess Federation give for banning trans women from competing with cis women? One, cis players have complained about competing against trans players. Two, they want more time to consider its official trans policy. Three, trans players dislike the gender queen and king chess piece. Number four, trans women are inherently more strategic than cis women. I'm going to say maybe they want more time to consider their trans policy. If there is such a thing, I'm like, why would they? You're using your brain, and whether you're a man or a woman... It doesn't matter. And and statistically speaking, women are smarter. They last longer than men. Yep. Jay? Don't answer on that one. Well, Tom is correct. It was about the policy. It, it, it's a non-issue. It's a non-starter. Yeah. It's like just let her play. You're talking about brain powers, nothing about physiology. It's all about the mind. All right, everybody. So which queer star has to sell their home due to actor strike in Hollywood? I wish you gave me these questions ahead of time because I no, totally could have displayed them on the screen. Oh, sorry. Yeah, but right. anyway, say that again. All right, so which queer star has to sell their home due to the actor strike in Hollywood? Number one, uh, Michaela Rodriguez. Number two, Lena Waithe. Number three, Sarah Ramirez. Or number four, Billy Porter. Billy Porter? I'm going to say Billy oh. Porter. You are both correct. But I also read a story that he was selling his house so anyway. Do I. Yeah. So I didn't, but 
Good for you. <laughs> All right, Jay Bird. Okay. Which state overrode its governor's veto and passed three anti transgender laws this week? Number one, Texas. Number two, Georgia. Number three, North Carolina. Or number four, Tennessee. I'm going to say number Texas. three. I'm going to say North Carolina. Okay. Texas. Tom was right. It was North Carolina. I actually didn't know that one, so. Oh, okay. Nice. Okay. Yeah. All right. Which criminal activity was a former aide of out gay rep George Santos, Republican from, Nor uh, from New York, accused of doing? Number one, admitting a high-ranking Republican in fundraising emails. Imitating, sorry. Number two, performing drag in a state with a drag ban. Number three, lying about extensive parts of his biography. Number four, inappropriately harassing Lauren Boebert and Marjorie Taylor Green. Number three. Marjorie. Marjorie Taylor Green. Yeah, fuck her. Nobody likes her Fucking anyway. Bitch. Um, I'm gonna say it is lying about um something. The profile? Yeah. Actually, no, you're both wrong. It's about imitating a high-ranking Republican in a fundraising email. Isn't oh. that number three? I want to, No, that was number one, I think. That was number one. Oh. Oh. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. What reason did the it, get be it Gets Better project give for no longer posting on Twitter slash now X? One, Elon Musk's transphobia made posting on Twitter feel hypocritical. Number two, budget cutbacks require it gets better to scale back its social media presence. Number three, the social media platform is too unsafe for LGBTQ plus youth. Number four, the It Gets Better project has far more social media followers on their social networks. I would say number three. Yes. That is correct. Oh my God, we're so smart. <laughs> Look at that, and I'm still the, the intern. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Proud of you guys. Which A-list celebrity stood up for her trans child this week in an interview with Hollywood Reporter? One, Julianne Moore. Two, Julia Roberts. Three, Annette Benning, Or four, Jennifer Anderson. I thought it was Annette Benning. I have no idea. You are correct, Jay. Yay, Jay Bird. You better work. Okay. All right, Tom, you should get this one. Donald Trump face... <sighs> His fourth criminal indictment this week. <laughs> mm -hmm. What do the charges stem from? Number one. Racketeering. Racketeering. No. January 6th. Uh, Racketeering. Hold on. Uh, well, the, 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 the basis for, for her legal, um, how would I say, framework is racketeering, but he's actually being charged for trying to obstruct um, the votes in in the state of Georgia, right? That's correct. He called the Secretary of State and he said, I need you to find me 11,855 more votes so that I can win the state and win the presidency. That's correct. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> which Republican uh, presidential candidate recently paid 95000 to an anti-LGBTQ plus hate group? One, Nikki Haley. Two, Donald Trump. Three, Mike Pence. Or four, Ron the Santimonium? The Santimonium, definitely the Santimonium. I'm going to say it was... It Trump was, light. Uh, it, it, oh, uh, but it could also be, like, I could see Mike Pence doing that. Uh, I don't think so. Okay, so, so Trump light it is. That is correct. All right, Jay Bird. <laughs> there it is. Your quiz for the day. Okay. All right. All right. Well, that allowed us to actually just get a little respite from the brain. So that being said, can we go back to the original question? Singers for you. All-time favorite. All-time greatest singer for you. Who do you think it is? When it comes to our community? Uh, not necessarily community. Anyone. In general? Anyone in general. Oof. Like... Even going back, I mean, you can, you, we can talk about opera, we can talk about anyone. Like, who do you think was just technically just skilled beyond this earth? Well, since this is a gay show, mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to have to go with Elton John. Okay. I think he's masterful. I love him. I think he's more technical than he is vocally. Like, he's more technically gifted than vocally gifted, but the man can deliver a line and deliver a song. He's fucking amazing, but he also like took a step out of the norm. Right. Even though he wasn't out, 
for a very I don't even know if he's out now. Is he out? Oh, he is. He is. I mean, okay. he married his um Oh, right. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. No, but like out. for a long time he was like this icon of like the extreme, you know, LGBTQ like the way he would dress, right. the way he would present himself. He was very androgynous back yeah. in those days. And like But then again, most rock stars were. I mean, did you s- have yeah. you seen some of these outfits of some of these David rock Bo- stars? Bowie. David Bowie, and you well, think about if like if you look at you know, all the heavy metal uh, queen, all the, all the metal, uh, um, yeah, Queen uh, and and like rock bands, yeah, Aerosmith. Uh, they Harry all Harry Styles kind yeah. of reminds me of Elton John a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah he does. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah, <clears throat> and then his song for "Princess Die." Oh, cute, yeah. "Candle in the Wind." Yeah, yeah, I, that that was. I think that that was also a very pivotal moment in his career. Oh, yeah. You know, for sure. Because it was... Did I tell you that I did? So, I think it was fifth grade. We all had to do a project on some iconic person. I picked Princess Di. I don't know why. Of course you did. Or how. But I picked her. And we had to do, like, a poster board, uh, a write-up. And then, like, there had to be one other element. So, I played Candle in the Wind. And I'm sitting up there in fifth grade just fucking bawling like a little bitch. (laughs) Like... (laughs) Oh, I can, I can totally picture it, too. How did they not know? Uh, oh, honey, oh, we, they knew. Knew. we knew. Well, they we knew. knew. We knew. <laughs> Jaybird, what about you? I don't know. I, I, I don't have a specific artist I can name off the top of my head. And I think that has to do a lot with when I listen to certain music. I mean, I have a specific song I like or right. an album that I like, and I'll play that for weeks on end you right. know what i mean but is, has then, there ever been an artist that you were like whoa like who who is this <clears throat> i think one of the first albums that i heard beginning to end was prince purple rain album purple, that okay. was a killer <laughs> album killer and then, album and, and yeah. i was probably around 12 right and you know the, the artist formerly known as prince and then prince again uh, was incredible. I mean, the man had a catalog that is the envy of the music world, yeah. most of which probably hasn't even been released, and God knows if we'll ever get to see yeah. a lot of the work that he did that wasn't, you know, released. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah, he, I, I just think uh, his music, I my first, being fresh from Puerto Rico, you know, just starting out in a new, in a new country, uh, right. uh, you know, in New York City, I was maybe about nine, 10, eh, closer to 12. Right. Um, <clears throat> it was the actual first album that my brother bought. He was in high school at the time. So I kind of sat, you know, and listened to that whole album. And I right. just, to me, it was just great freaking music. And mm-hmm. even today I hear your certain songs, regardless of where I'm at. And I'm like, Oh, I got to listen to this. I don't care if I'm running late. I'm listening to the song. <laughs> you know God. what I mean? I'm so, so. fucking white. <laughs> My first album was like Beaches. Beaches. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, the soundtrack from the movie. <laughs> Oh my God, that is too funny. That is too funny. So here's the thing. The reason why I asked this question is because I have been, you know, on this kick of going back to, you know, listening to music and and people and and, and artists that that have incredible range and, and, and registers. And it doesn't matter whether it's male or female, but no matter who I listen to, like you can think, for example, great amazing singers like Whitney Houston, for example, right? The woman was called The Voice for a reason. Mm-hmm. Oh, her, well, yeah. I mean, she was just incredibly talented and her skills were just on, like, matched, right? And then you start thinking about, um, you know, other, like, great, for example, you know, opera singers like Pavarotti and you think of, you know, um, Andrea Bocelli and Sarah Brightman and you think of all of these amazing, super talented people that, that, are, are gods in the music world. Not only in the music world, but also in theater, right? I mean, you know, when you think about Sarah Brightman, I mean, Andrew Lloyd Webber made that woman. I mean, she was incredible in the Phantom of the Opera and all of these other things. But no matter where I go, when I start watching videos of this uh, of this band, this, this 70s and 80s band journey, I always end up on Steve Perry. The man was gifted. When you think about songs like Faithfully, when you think about songs like you know, uh, open arms and his range. It is sickening to watch that man do his thing at the prime of his life. And to think that for, for example, journey is actually still touring. Mm -hmm. 
and they have gone through three different singers who try to emulate Steve Perry, but it's, you can't, you just can't. And he wasn't the cutest guy in the world, but man, his voice was just insane. Well, some artists were actual artists back yeah. in the day. Oh, uh, he was incredible. Unlike though. today, even even in the hip hop community, where they, you know, they all these new artists they call them mumble rappers. Right, right. Because all they do is repeat the same face over and over again. So, but yeah, there's a lot of artists that definitely can have had boy this to actually sing. And you see less and less of them nowadays. So it's when you do find someone that really belts it out there, you mm -hmm. tend to follow them more than anyone else. Yeah. Right. I mean, I want auto tune. I want yeah. all of the things. <laughs> yeah. But that's the thing. So you know, for me, like when, no, no, like not literally, just for me. But that's the thing when you when you see this man perform, whether he's live or on a record. It is insanely crazy how he just sounds the same. The same, yeah. And it was effortless. Like you could see this man jumping from like a drum set onto the stage and then onto a speaker, and then he would just land, and he's not even gasping for air. The man is just releasing notes. It they just flew out of him, and I, I, yeah. You know what's really funny that you bring this up because I, I was talking with somebody um, last week about. They went and saw, it wasn't Journey, it was another band, and I can't remember what it was, but it was like a tribute band, right? And if you look at all the music of Journey, and you listen to the lyrics, like, it's still, like, relatable today. Oh, of course. You know what I mean? Like, just thinking, of, like, don't stop believing, like, what's going on in the world today, right. you know, just different things. They wrote music that meant something, and now, <clears throat> excuse me, while we do have artists that do that, we also have artists from the 90s that were like, baby, hit me one more time. Hit yeah. me, baby, You know, one like, more time. I love Britney. Don't get me wrong. I love me some Britney. We're not Britney hating. No. We're not God Britney no. hating, God although no. we haven't seen her in a hot minute, so we're a little worried. She's yeah. going through a divorce. She, she's about to release a book. Oh. And she has a Broadway show right now. Are you going to buy the book? No. Yes. For our <laughs> listeners. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Oh my God. All right. Well, listen, um, I am super nervous about today. You know, technical difficulties is like my specialty and I really don't want to screw things up. So we're going to take a break because we have to make sure that we are on time for our guest. So we'll leave you with some music. And when we come back, we're going to have more dish. We'll be right back. All right, ladies and gents, welcome back from the break. And thank you so much for joining us. Uh, actually, not joining us, but allowing us to take our break. Joining us now, of course, is our amazing guest, Mark King. He is joining us to talk about his latest book, My Fabulous Disease, Chronicles of a Gay Survivor. The book is due to release on September 1st. I'm actually super excited to talk uh, with Mark because I know that the topics that this man has covered uh, throughout most of his entire uh, adult life is something that's meaningful and has had an impact on many people. So we're going to bring him into the live stream, of course, and uh, welcome. Oh, oh. how are you, darling? <laughs> I am wonderful. I, can I just say, first of all, that I love the name of your show, Gay Talk. I feel like I was born to be on this show. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, we're more than happy to have you. I think, um, you know, your journey in life um, has really been such an, an, an amazing um, work in a sense because, you know, you go through the entire, like, it's almost when you, when you think about what happened in the early 80s, when you think about what happened in the late 80s and then subsequently in the, in the early 90s and all of the things that the youth today can't conceptualize, you bring to the table and you have documented throughout your entire life. And that in itself is something that needs to be commended. So yeah. congratulations on your life's work, um, well-deserved, and welcome to Gay Talk. Thank you very much. And, and I appreciate hearing all of that. You know, um, I feel as if I'm shameless in all of the best ways. And by that, I mean, I'm just without shame. And there are so many things that we as a community have been through in the last 40 years. And I don't just mean HIV and AIDS, which it is true. I made it out of the 1980s alive. And I'm very happy about that, especially having tested positive in 1985 um, during a time when uh, 
there were no medications. Uh, there was no one willing to help us. We had to do it for ourselves. Right. Um, but but everything else, just in terms of growing old gracefully in a culture that values youth so much, you know, yeah. and um, <laughs> trying to uh, get through a crystal meth addiction and the fact that LGBTQ people have a higher rate of drug and alcohol uh, dependency, you know. There's a lot, and uh, there's and all of those things may I know sound um, difficult, um, but there's a reason that I call it my fabulous disease. You know, I am not going to let HIV take another moment of joy from me, not for one goddamn second. And, and uh, I am going amazing. to live life with joy and gratitude, and um, hopefully, kind of like help other people along the way because I think that's what we're here for. Yeah, agreed, one hundred percent. And that's no, normally that you, you can't say that. That's that's my thing. <laughs> also, let me pause you for a second. So, yes. Tom is a little starstruck. I'm not sure why. <laughs> I know that. So we're trying a new platform today where we're live streaming you. You're our first guest where we're video live streaming, and so he's been going through it a little bit, like worrying that it wasn't going to work. But I think he might be a little in love with you. <laughs> oh, Nick, that is so inappropriate. But I'm oh, no. Wrong. Oh, no. It's totally appropriate. Tom, I'm 62 years old. Bring it on. Bless your heart. You know? Bless I, I mean, heart. <laughs> where am I flying to? <laughs> I mean, thank God that gays are so good at branding. You know, um, gingers became hot like 10 minute, ten years ago. I would like to know where you were 30 years ago when I needed you, all you ginger lovers. But now I'm a daddy. I'm a zaddy, I think. And, um, you know, I'll take daddy. whatever branding you give me that <laughs> makes us all feel better about ourselves. Because the whole thing, the whole, the bears and the and the puppies and the whole, it's like, if, if we're doing this so that we can celebrate a different look, a different body image, a different age, then more power to us. Let's yeah. do that. Absolutely. And so, so, you know, Tom, call me. I'm happily married. But call me anyway and we'll discuss. <laughs> We'll talk Just going to slip that in really quick. We'll <laughs> talk about it. We'll absolutely talk about it. I'm game. I'm on. I'm on. I'll be okay. on the next flight out. By the okay. way, really quick, I just want to say I'm Nick and <laughs> Jay. Nice to meet and you. Obviously, I'm you know your future ex-husband. Okay, hello. Hi. <laughs> nice to meet you all. All of you. As you can see, we're, we're, very, um, we're a very spirited bunch on the show. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so... It, it, for me, it, I barely ever get tongue twisted. I, I, I know. So, I, so, so, Mark, tell us a little bit about you. Yes, please. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, first of all, my fabulous disease, Chronicles of Gay Survivor, is a collection of work of of essays, of musings of mine over of the course of four decades of writing. I've been writing in real time about. Uh, living with HIV, about just uh, being once upon a time a cute gay twink and navigating life as one, and then growing through the circuit party scene and the steroids and the gym membership and all of that, because I thought that's what I needed yeah. to be, you know, and um, and then growing, kind of maturing and, and, and finding a, a maturity and, and a sense of just being happy with the way I am and, and just being, uh, uh, you know, with all of that wisdom, you know, uh, and, and being smart enough to know um, that um, uh, we are more than how we present on a dance floor. Yeah. You know, yes. uh, we are about um, our community and about our ability and about our capacity to love and help other people. You know, it turns out all the corniest stuff in life is true. Yeah. You know, the corniest stuff in life is true. And, and, and that includes we are here to help people along, mm -hmm. you know, the best that we can, because this is a scary ride sometimes. Right. Yeah, I agree. And um, we're, we're just help. We're, we're, we're here to make the journey a little easier for somebody else. And, you know, you sound like your your story, your history, your your journey um, gives you this enlightenment that I think a lot of people are seeking, but there was a time at which you didn't have that, right? So talk, can you talk a little bit about when you found out that you had HIV and, and what you went through? And Absolutely. It was West Hollywood, picture it, West Hollywood, California, 1984. You know, at the tail end of the gay sexual revolution and this new kind of dark cloud was appearing, right? The test had just been developed. We There wasn't even an HIV test the month before. 
And as soon as it became publicly available, I took it. Um, and it was, you weren't supposed to, by the way, because there was nothing that could be done. You know, there were no drugs or you, you could be fired from your job and kicked out by your roommate and disowned by your family. I mean, why would you want to know? There's nothing good that could, and, and activists were saying, don't take the test because nothing good could come of it. And the, and the way I look at it is, you know, if there was an envelope in front of you right now that would tell you if you were going to be alive or dead in two years, would you open it? And I decided I would open it. I wanted to know. I wanted to know how to, how to plan things out. And sure enough, I was positive. And, you know, I did not think much further than the next beer bust. <laughs> I mean, come on. I was 24. You know, what did I know? I was 24 in West Hollywood, you know, and uh, I, I, I went out. I had a great time. I visited the clinic every couple of weeks. You know, I used to say I, I, I got the clap so many times I called it the applause. Uh, I just was I was, you know, I'm just I was on the scene and having a good time. And, and not that there's anything wrong with that. As a matter of fact, I think what happened is the crisis made us all grow up really fast. And somebody like me who was 24 and was really just, you know, kind of on the make, um, had to grow up and had to face all of these questions that I had no intention of thinking about for a long time. Why are we here? What does this all mean? Why are we dying? Is there a God who, you know, all of this stuff that you think you have your whole life to think about gets compressed. Yeah. And you have to figure those things out really quickly. And, and that's it's heady so stuff for any 24 year old to have to figure out. Right. So, so you strike me as a very um, positive, uh, uplifting and fun person, right? Like you have a very fun demeanor about you. You like to, I, I, I'm surmising here. Yeah. You like no, you're right. Joke, I am. I came this way. And, and oh, honey, if you come that way, then, you know, it's going to be a fun time in the bedroom. <laughs> I can, I can oh, it's that it. kind of show. Okay. No, no, no. no. Well, we talk a little bit about everything here. No, but but I think what I was trying what I was trying to get at before I got distracted is that, you know, you strike me as a very um, positive person. And when you find out that you are positive, it's 1984, you, you took the test. How do you find the positive? How do you find the positive in such news when you're seeing people drop like flies? I lost a lot of friends yeah, um, in, in, in those waves, right? Mm -hmm. And not many people were fortunate enough to, to live your story, to tell yeah. the story that well, you tell. No, I'll tell you, it was a real test <laughs> and uh, it didn't come right away. It was hard fought to find myself again, because I didn't, I let my, you know, I, I came this way in terms of, I, I'm happy to be here. I'm, I've always been happy to be here, you know, but um, with that news and with all the death that followed it and losing my friends and saying goodbye to friends who were younger than me, you know, um, was rough. It was hard. And um, I lost myself. I, I was trying just, just treading water, you know, just there was so much to do, you know, there were, there were hospital visits to make and meals to deliver and friends in, in, in their last stage. It was a lot. And I, I self-medicated, did a lot of drugs, did a lot. And, um, I felt entitled to it. And then as those years went on and, and of course I thought I was the next to go, right. You know, I mean, I just kept waiting for that to happen and it didn't. I was just one of those oddballs that, <clears throat> excuse me, that just never got sick. Um, but I didn't know that at the time. So in real time, I was just kind of waiting around for it to happen. And, you know, a lot of us it, we kind of, there were two camps. There was the camps that just, we were frozen into an action. We were afraid and there's, that's totally human. And, and we didn't know what to do. And we just kind of went inside ourselves. We retreated. And then there were those of us that went, well, I, I, this is not going to stand not for one fucking second. We're going to do something. And what do we do? And how do we get medications and how do we, how do we get clinical trials and who's going to deliver the meals and all of that stuff. And, and I like to tell that story, not for the tragedy of it. I always tell people, please, I know I'm a long-term survivor and that's kind of my brand, but please don't reduce me to that. Mm -hmm. I am so much more. I'm a guy that loves Netflix. 
and I love I uh, <laughs> that you know that that Does loves a good laugh. A and I have um, a, a list of horror movies I haven't gotten to see yet. I have no time to die. And so there's a lot more uh, to me. And, and there's so much more to us as a community. You know, um, I don't know what your age is, but when I talk to people who are significantly younger than me, one of the things I really try to get across to them is this that happened to us, this is your lineage. This is your, this is, this is your lineage, your history. This is who you are, your people. We did this. We rose up when no, nobody else would. We built organizations. We started support groups. We, we, we loved each other fiercely when no one else did. And, and that's a lot to be proud of. And if you're 24 years old today, you get to be proud of that too, because right. that's part of who you are. That is in your gay DNA. And I don't worry so much about young people today. We're all, we all have our shit. We're all gonna have our stuff. I don't worry about whether or not somebody who is 25 understands everything about what happened to us. You know, they're gonna have their own stuff, you know? And, and I know that whatever they face, they're gonna face it and be magnificent. Yeah. Because we did it, because we were, we were magnificent. We are all capable of this. Um, you know, I, if, if, and then finally, it's just like the big lessons. I'm giving you the big lessons and I do hope you're writing these down. Oh, they're being oh, recorded. recorded. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, this is the big secret to life. You, 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 um, you, you use what has happened to you so that you can have empathy for someone else who may be going through something completely different. I mean, there are people listening to this broadcast right now who have been through worse than I have. And if I didn't use my experience to better understand them, what the hell was it all for? Right? right? That's why we're here. Right. You know, we started the show today with, um, honestly, it was kind of a stupid video, but it was um, the vocal of some TikToker saying, you know, we have history. This, there is history, and just because you ignore it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And I think what you just said speaks so um, volumes to the fact that, you know, we've all really, you know, dive deep into the history that is the LGBTQ plus community, but there are so many people out there that don't understand or don't have the opportunity to learn about the things that your generation allowed my generation right. to, to, to have access to and have knowledge about. I mean, yeah. when, I, when, I, when I was coming out, I thought, oh, I'm gay, I'm gonna die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And imagine if we had education in, in schools across the country at that time mm. saying, no, that's not the case. You're not going to die. Right. No? You know, um, I try to have a generosity of spirit toward younger folks who didn't go through what we did. Um, because um, I remember being 25. I, I remember, I, I remember seeing Vietnam vets, you know, on the streets, you know, panhandling, or, or, or I had a brother that was in Vietnam. Never once did I walk up to him and say, tell me all about it. Tell me what happened to you. No, we're, you know, we're young, we're self-absorbed, we're doing our own thing. And, and, and that is human and it's okay. The, what, what we have to be able, ready for is that opportunity when they do ask. Or when I have an opportunity to tell the story and to say a little bit about this is what happened to me and this is what it was like. You know, and, and again, not reducing me just to that because if you look at the book, only one section is about HIV and AIDS and, and my, like in my writing there. I right. talk about sex. I talk about owning a phone sex company back in the day. Oh, my God. I wanted to ask you about that. Now <laughs> okay, that well, I've done that. over 10,000 calls <laughs> with, so, with men on the other line. Uh, and you learn a lot about what gay men, what makes them tick when they're paying money to blurt out what they're thinking. <laughs> you know, um, the name of the company was Telerotic, and I loved our tagline, um, our men know you like the palm of your hand. And, you know, <laughs> that's, 
we and we did we we learned a lot about what how gay men tick and it's funny because that was in the early 80s that i had that company right. and then years later when i started designing prevention programs for gay men and 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 talking sex with gay men i know a little something you can't get anything past me i know what you're thinking right i know what you want to do because i've heard it all oh wow <laughs> that, that, that's that's a very uh very interesting uh thing that you know you you included that as part of your 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 writing in your book and and your work because that was a very very huge part of our society when you think about the 80s 90s i mean i remember calling the sex hotlines you know it's like oh you know what's going to be on the other end of you the line you guys may have already talked probably <laughs> <laughs> well Actually, those party lines came after I was one of I was original gangster. I was you used a credit card cost $40 and you would call the service and order the kind of person you wanted to talk to. And he would call you back. Oh, yeah, and so in one that. phone call, I was a surfer dude from Venice Beach, California. And the next, the next one, I was a uh, volunteer fire department guy who was uh, retired from minor league baseball. I could tell you a story. I could go on and on. The point is that those calls were sometimes lifelines to guys that lived in Ohio or Kansas yeah. or someplace right. where they had no outlets at all. And it wasn't about, it wasn't just about some masturbatory fantasy. It was about connection, connection. and acceptance and feeling as if what we were talking about was okay. Yeah, you, you know, know um, there was a lot of humanity in those calls. I got to tell yeah. you. You know, I was listening to something that you were talking about earlier and we can totally go back to the sex line. We totally can. No, eventually, uh, eventually. But um, you were talking about the stigma around HIV and how it om almost has to like uh, phase out through generations. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if you could speak a little bit more to that because there is still so much stigma around HIV and AIDS and the fact that there, you know, if you're on prep, you're virtually safe to have sex with anybody. Well, not only if you're on PrEP, if you're if you're positive and undetectable because you're on successful treatment, as most people who are on treatment are, you are unable to pass the virus on to someone else, you know. And so but when you, when I talk about generationally, absolutely, we have had a generation, a full generation of mortal fear of HIV and what it could mean. It means death, right? You know, you said I was growing up and and felt like, oh, I'm gay, I'm going to die. You know, I mean, that was <laughs> that was the great promise delivered to us as a result of AIDS, right? Yeah. That doesn't just go away. And just because we say to somebody, oh, I'm on prep, don't worry about me, or oh, I'm undetectable, you know, that's that may be, you know, scientifically true, but it's no, it's no, you can't compete with a generation of mortal fear. That's going to take another generation to fully go away. And again, that generosity of spirit, that sense of people are going to understand this, but they may not understand it right away. You know, I mean, you waltz into my bedroom and tell me, oh, I'm positive, but don't worry, I'm undetectable and I can't give you anything. And I'm going to be okay with that, like mm -hmm. right off the bat. It's going to take some time yeah, and, yeah. and, and, uh, um, but it's changing and people are learning. I just think that stigma works both ways. We can jump down somebody's throat for their ignorance. Willful mm -hmm. ignorance is different, but if somebody is just purely ignorant or they're just afraid, that's a very human emotion. And we need to, we need to give some people some slack over right. that. Mm -hmm. I, I think, I think as generational as well, um, now nowadays the HIV, even though it's still prominent and 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 there's a fear the younger generation doesn't have the fear we grew up with uh, yeah you know and so so i think they're more a, a bit more promiscuous and mm -hmm. uh, undetectable equals untransmittable well, wait a, a second thing. you think they're more promiscuous than we were well uh, <laughs> when it comes to unprotected sex well that, you're right. Uh, yeah. You're right. <laughs> no, you're right. Well, I mean, but, but I, I, think... I am of an age where I remember I remember having sex before HIV. Yeah, exactly. and it was yeah. glorious. Oh, absolutely. I and mean, when we think about the, the constant, the, yeah. the the coming out of that sexual revolution of the '70s and disco, and you know, all of the the craziness that came with that, right? And the drugs and the feeling lovely and dancing and and always, you know, party, party, party. So, I mean. 
you know. Yeah, no, no, we well, uh, and I'm not I'm not downplaying that at all. What I what I'm trying to get to is now because there is prep and there is the uh, you know uh, undetectable, untransmittable, I think a lot of people are ty- are are tending to downplay the risks more than mm-hmm. they should. Um, you know, um, and, and and the treatments work absolutely i i did hiv case management for about eight years in in the connecticut area um so i've seen a lot of those thank you changes. for doing that not at all this it's a work of passion because um, mm-hmm. unfortunately it's not something you get rich off of that's right um but uh i i can tell you that sometimes the way i see grinder for example mm-hmm. you know first thing they put you know on prep like like it's a headline for everything you do and they're not thinking okay you know that you're playing it safe this way but there's still other stuff out there mm-hmm. that is still transmittable so I, okay. I think they tend to be a little bit more promiscuous than they need to be with certain aspects of okay it. let's talk let's unpack that a little bit because i appreciate <laughs> you being honest about it and talking about your kind of your your not you know you're being a, a little unsure about their behaviors and and what it might mean i appreciate you saying that i look at it this way um um they put prep at the first line of their grinder profile that's a success story that is amazing so let's just start there that's amazing now what it might mean you know we have a hard time with the idea that some people might be fucking their brains out we kind of have a little bit of a hard time with it. And the older we get, the harder the time we have with it. Right. Um, and I'm just saying, because I, I wonder about that too. I think that everybody, you know, I'm I'm positive. I'm, I'm undetectable. U equals U, right? And I think to myself, all those people are out there. U equals Uing their brains out. And here I am, 62 and married, and I don't get to have this. I guess, let me give you an example. I declare. In, in the 1960s, when the pill came out, there was a huge backlash against it. You know why? Because they thought it would make women more promiscuous. And so God forbid that they should have agency over their own bodies. So I saw that the backlash over prep when it came out, oh my gosh, all these gay guys are gonna have a lot more sex because they're on prep. You know, I thought it was very interesting. I thought there were real parallels there, including parallels with U equals U. I'm I'm HIV positive. I cannot transmit the virus. I might have more sex. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'll have a lot more sex. Yeah. I it, mean, what, so what? So yeah, what? Absolutely. You know, I mean, there. It's hard to say really if they are or if their grinder profile just makes it look like they are. We all right. kind of like the idea of people thinking we're having more sex than we actually are, right? Right. Yeah. True. Oh, agreed. Agreed. <laughs> I, I think it's a wonderful thing. Prep is a great thing, and all of the other medications that have come out since prep, right? Because prep is not the only thing in the game out there right now. You have all of these different, you know, treatments uh, available now. You don't have to take a pill every day. You can take a. a Medication every three months. You go to your doctor. You know, there's a, there's a plethora of of options available. What I have a hard time with right now is the messaging and the commercials. So you very well know that in the beginning, you know, when HIV started coming out and and AIDS was deadly. It was a death sentence. Immediately, it was targeted or or attributed to the gay community. Mm-hmm. Right. It was one of the first things that they did. Government didn't want to touch it. We had no administration, at least until the Clinton eras. And that was in the 90s that would even consider doing anything that would promote, um, you know, some sort of assistance in, in, in this effort to find mm-hmm. how we're going to mitigate this. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now I start seeing commercials and the majority of the commercials are gay couples. And, you know, for something that was su- it w- that was attributed to to the gay community for so long, right, that mm-hmm. prevented actually from government agencies reacting and actually coming up with a plan because of the fact that it was affecting the gay community, the gay community. We're taking commercials now and literally, like, targeting them just to the gay community when we know that HIV and AIDS does, doesn't just affect members of our community, it affects everyone Mm -hmm. and and i feel a little weird about that because i know i know the the history of of what our community went through in the early 80s 
mm-hmm. and to see what 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 they're doing with the messaging and the commercials today. And I wanted to get your take on that because I'm I'm kind of feeling that you know I'm coming at it from a why the fuck would you you do that? And you're just totally gonna put a spin on it, and so, I'm just gonna accept it. Just to clarify, <laughs> so are you are you taken aback by the messaging that it's just only? Or we're seeing it mainly focused on on gay the gay men, community, on the gay on community, the gay, community and, gay men, gay so, relationships. So then the narrative and the education is pretty much saying that if you're gay and or if you're not gay, you're safe. Basically. No, not necessarily. What it's saying is, you know, like if you're a gay person, this is what you need to be, you know, taking, which but is if great. You're straight, you're fine. Right. And so right. for me, it's just like, you know, it doesn't only affect our community, it affects so many people in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, this is, you know, it, it never was just a gay thing. It's just people picked our community as, as, as a scapegoat for, oh, this is God's punishment. It's yours. You own this. Um, I am with you through most of that. (laughs) I am right there with you through most of that. First of all, you can't deny um, that a big player in everything you just mentioned is the big bad pharmaceuticals. And they are driven by profits and they're driven by who, who buys their products and who can buy their products. In other words, they are not going to market to black trans women in the South who can't afford PrEP or uh, education, all that, so they don't bother with trying to market toward them. They they put white gay men in their ads, or maybe if they're lucky, a, a Latino gay man. You know, um, uh, so the pharmaceutical industry and what's going on in terms of just just profit. You know, uh, um, you know, the the, the that's the, that's driving a lot of this. Um, it's also true though that it did primarily affect gay men in the early 80s it did that is just an epidemiological fact it did and um uh it did there were there were black men and women that were affected early on that's true but not nearly in the same amount of numbers and that is why there was so much stigma involved in it because uh and there's a whole conversation to be had about whether or not aids helped or hurt gay rights did it make us seem like a sympathetic victims or did it make it seem us, us like, uh, you know, uh, God damned literally monsters, you know, which was it? Um, HIV, HIV, meanwhile, cares not for this conversation. Right. HIV just follows the path of least resistance. And that is the white gay guy that gets drunk and forgets his prep and goes out and has unprotected sex. That is the uh, black trans woman and living in the South who doesn't have access uh, to education about it, much less the insurance to cover it. So HIV just continues on its merry way, following the path of least resistance. Something that's interesting part of this that I would like to bring up is that the HIV arena, who is still there? Who is the fight? You, If you remember looking at the activism of the 80s and 90s, it was white gay men front and center. Not, we weren't alone, but the media loved us. The media loved centering our stories rather than the women, the lesbians, the mm-hmm. black men and women who were right there beside us. They centered white men, right? By and large, white gay guys got what we came for. We got the meds, we got the drugs, we got the research, we got the support groups, we got the U equals U and all of that, and we left. We left the playing field, and we left behind everybody else to fend for themselves. And who is that? Women, black gay men, black trans women, the the people who who had the the who were least equipped to do this. And, and the, the good part of that, the victory in that is that when you look around the AIDS arena today, in terms of who's leading the fight, who are the most effective advocates, who are the people who are really making a difference and have the most provocative, you know, ways to approach AIDS activism today, black women, black Mm -hmm. women, they are in charge. They are large and they're not leading the agencies and getting paid the same, but they are large and in charge in terms of who is driving activism today. White gay men, I'm afraid to say, are off. We've gotten gay married and adopting kids and we're off in the suburbs and when we are not on the scene, 
by and large, to the extent that we used to be. Now, maybe we deserve a break. Maybe a lot of us put in our dues and we are off there, but we are not being repopulated by younger white gay men who have their own things. They have their own issues. They have their own things. They're concerned with climate change. Okay, great. They, they have the other things. But who is left in the HIV arena today and who is leading it doesn't look anything like it used to. Right. Um, and is that progress or is that abandonment? I think it's a bit of both, if you yeah. ask me. I mean, you know, there's a lot more work to be done clearly in this arena. But I want to talk about your life work, right? You have taken everything that you've ever documented and you're putting it into this book that's releasing on September 1st. Um, but I know that your body of work must be extensive. How hard was it to compile what you wanted to include in this book and what did you leave out? Wow, you know, that is such a nice way of asking. <laughs> you know, um, thank you. Um, you know, I got my favorite ones. I got my favorite ones. I'm an essayist, you know. I used to be a columnist where I had columns in the newspapers back in the day. And then I was a blogger. And, you know, you know, call me what you want. I just like to get make my point in about 800 words, you know, and that's it. And so today... I, I I looked at all of those written pieces and I collected what I thought were the best ones. In other words, can I take you on a journey in this book through love and sex and comedy and uh, um, all of that tragedy and, and falling in love and, and gonorrhea? Can I do it all and take you on a journey and what are my best pieces that'll tell that story? And, and that's how I selected them. I did have to leave some that I would have loved to have included and I didn't, you know. Um, so. Um, um, I, it's my, it, they are my favorites yeah. and, and that's my only criteria. Will you enjoy reading these? You know, will you laugh? Are they bite size so that you can read a chapter or two before you go to bed and then go off to sleep with, you know, sweet dreams about my phone sex company or whatever you just read about, you know? Right. So yeah, I, I, uh, I, it is my life's work. It's been my privilege to tell the story. I'm glad that people want to hear it and I hope I can be very entertaining along the way because I am after all a showman. I, I, I'm a, I, I am a storyteller and an entertainer and that I love you it. Are, that you are. I've been watching videos of you to, uh, of, of you on YouTube and stuff and doing all of your, like, you know, your, your, your speaking engagements and stuff. And you're very, you have a very, very, uh, um, amazing presence on stage and you, you well you have seen me in drag on youtube too right <laughs> i have not so I'm, i have i have to go find it now oh my god you need to google immediately i need a man tv set uh, i need TV, a man set. tv set i need a man write that down. <laughs> you know you will be writing your mother about that video but anyway yeah but thanks so thank you thank you for that <laughs> So you're about to release the book. Uh, the book is coming out. Actually, you've, the book is already done, but it's coming out on September 1st. Yeah. And you have comments, um, for example, from people uh, that um, have read your body of work, either, you know, when it came out or throughout the course of your life that yeah. wrote things like, for example, if AIDS, if the AIDS pandemic had a Mark Twain, it would be Mark S. King. And that was <laughs> Sean Straub, which yeah. was author of... When you hear things like that, when you see things like that, how does that make you feel? Oh, it makes me feel great because I have made some great friends along the way, people who are, you know, uh, notable other writers and, and, and whatnot. And uh, it makes me feel great uh, because I, like most people, have terrible imposter syndrome. You know, I think that you're going to find out that, you know, uh, that I'm not all that great or some somebody's going to call into the show and say, I had sex with him and he sucked, you know, or, or something. You know, I will be revealed to be some sort of, you know, fraud. Um, I, I a lot of that has to do with recovering from drug addiction. You know, we, we, we live in this constant state of shame. And oh, my gosh, something going to find out somebody's going to come out of the woodwork that I used to do drugs with and say terrible things. Well, my writing inoculates me from all of that. I, I am able to tell the truth and um, find some lessons in it somewhere and maybe some comedy, you know, and uh, um, um, gosh, what a gift that is. I feel like it's a gift. I, I It's been a privilege to write about it. Um, I, I'm just telling my story, man. I'm just, I'm just doing my thing. You know, I, I did want to go back just 
for a second and just make a comment about what you were talking about when it comes to, you know, the white privileged guy who is now kind of on the back burner. And I think that with the younger generation, it really comes down to education and understanding of what our community went through and they don't understand that they still need to step up and speak out Mm -hmm. and share what they know and share their privilege so -hmm. that other people don't face things that we had to face or that our community had to face. And I think that your book is just another step in that direction, right? Because you're sharing your story and you're sharing your story to people that need to hear it that otherwise wouldn't and think Mm -hmm. that they can sit back on their laurels and not continue to fight. Mm -hmm. That's lovely. Thank you. Um, Thanks. Yeah, of course. That was just my, my thought, but, uh, and I will tell you if anybody ever says that, you know, they had sex with you and you were lousy, they weren't doing it right. Well, yeah, I can't (laughs) imagine who, I mean, that's their problem. (laughs) problem. (laughs) They weren't doing it right. It wasn't me. (laughs) It wasn't me, (laughs) you know? So, uh, Mark, I I want first and foremost to thank you for your time, uh, for taking time and and coming on our show and talking about this amazing experience that is your life now, right? When you you look back and you reflect on it, um, all of the amazing, beautiful things that, you know, you get to do. Like HIV didn't define you, Mm -mm. right? You took it, you ran with it, and you did something positive and amazing, and you continue to do that to this day. Aside from the book that's coming out on September 1st, is there anything else that we should be looking for that you're going to be participating in or doing? I want you to whore yourself out on our show. Please do (laughs) so. Oh my gosh, I thank you for pimping me out in this way. It's been years. (laughs) Um, (laughs) You know, I, 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 my my home base is myfabulousdisease.com. That is where I've been writing and where you can find out more about the book or you can find out about events. I'm going to be in five cities in September and then more to come in October. So uh, you're, if you might, I might be coming to a city near you. Basically, Palm Springs, San Francisco, Fort Lauderdale, Atlanta, D.C., Chicago, New York. If you're old and gay, I'm coming to your town. Okay. So by all means, you know, uh, saddle up and, and find out more at MyFabulousDisease.com. Don't oh, my God. How was that? That was great. That was, that was okay. great. Don't promise me a good time when you say saddle up. I'll be there. <laughs> all I'll right. Wear my cowboy okay. boots, my little hat, and all that good stuff. That sounds adorable. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, Mark. Um, you have an open invitation to join us whenever you want. So I know the. Book I is have. Come I have out. gotten several open invitations during this interview, and I appreciate them all. <laughs> They were all from Tom, right? <laughs> so I know the book is going to come out September 1st. I'm obviously going to get uh, myself a copy, and I would hope that uh, people that are listening, our listeners, uh, do the same. And, you know, definitely would love to revisit and, and get your feedback on on what people think of your body of work, which I think is going to be amazing, um, and, and share it with us. So please feel free to reach out, and obviously we'll reach out to you and say, come back on. Let's, we need to sort of kind of rehash the absolutely you bring me on if anytime you need a top ginger daddy <laughs> to show up online and start you know Why oh wait did i, did I get s- turned on did i, I say that at, i live at 40 no let me no, stop no, we're gonna stop leave that. it there uh, okay all right well but if you read the book you'll find out it's only because it's by default i'm a terrible bottom terrible that's all right i can teach yeah. you some things i'm verse yeah. Okay. That's okay. That's it. No, I, I, you know, I, I like it. I like it the way it is. I just have to show up. Yeah, you know, that's all you it's the lazy do. man's way. <laughs> Direct well, and to the point. Hey, listen, there's nothing wrong with that. Right? There's nothing wrong with living in your truth. <laughs> that's awesome. Mark, thank, thank you so you. much for joining us. You have yourself a wonderful day and uh, we're definitely going to have you back on the show. Okay. It's good. Y'all have a great evening. You too. You too. Much love. Mwah. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, my God. Ladies and gents, marking. That's all I have to say. Uh, I think I, I'm. Go- I, the show's over. I have to go upstairs. I, I don't know to... what you were going through, but it was Clean something... up on aisle Tom. <laughs> You're nasty. <laughs> He's not wrong. No, no. I'm, I'm going to. You were I'm... sweating yeah, at the top snail of the second no, half. No, You're going to okay, leave a snail okay. trail on that seat. Okay. You're nasty. You're nasty. Uh, but I, I do have to say, it's, we're using a new platform, and I'm super nervous. Obviously, you know, th- this subject is is very near and dear to my heart. True. You know that my dad um, 
who I really didn't have a relationship, passed away. He was HIV positive, and he had been since the 80s. Yeah, and I, I don't want to minimize any of that. But. No, no, no. I'm just saying, you know, uh, yeah, we, we know. We know it's a thing. Um, but <laughs> what I'm saying is that, to me, you know, this conversation, having conversations about people who have actually experienced all of this, you know, from the beginning and, and find some way to take it and make it their own, right? Like you don't get defined by what happens to you, you get defined by what you choose to do with your life. And for me, doing that is, is I think that's our purpose, right? Like for all of us humans, it's like you, we go through life meeting people, we go through life experiencing experiences in our lives and you take with you what is good and you leave behind what isn't. And that in itself for me is, is what it's all about. At least I like to think that that's what it is. So not only, you know, you know, yeah, was he, I, I love Ginger guys. Yeah. He's beautiful, beautiful man. I don't I, care if you're in the sixties. He's gorgeous. I that's not, I can't like That's you need more. to put your foot in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that, you know, I, I'm really, really excited to read this man's body of work because, um, it just, for me, it's just going to really fill a void of, of information that I need. Right. And in a positive, I mean, to think about someone's positive outlook is just great. Why are you doing that, Trish? I can't help it. <sighs> I've never seen her like this. I know. Like, we've had, like, beautiful men on the show. And Mark is beautiful. Don't get me wrong. But, like, You're fired. Girl, you don't even pay me anymore. You don't, you don't I even can't pay with him. I can't with him. So, anyway. I booked her for you. Thank you. I no, appreciate it. No, I booked it. her because I thought she was amazing, but. Yeah, he's amazing. So what we're going to do is we're we'll make sure that we have all the links to uh, be able to purchase, you know, the book if, if that's what you fancy. Um, you know, he's got a YouTube channel. You can go on YouTube and, and watch all of his, you know, amazing content there. We'll put the links to that as well on, on tonight's post. Um, and then, you know, we'll share it. Obviously, you have the, the live stream video and all that good stuff. Yeah. Is that what we do? We, yeah. yeah. We do all that good we're stuff. Share. Okay. So anyway. Um, Trish, I hate you. I really do. But I love you. I love you. Uh, All right. Well, ladies and gents, I think uh, it is time for us to sort of kind of wiggle our way and, and wrap up today's episode. So I'm going to toss it over to my children because that's what they are today. Absolute children. So that they can, um, you know, do their bits. Um, so you're first, Trish. There's your love. <laughs> Thank you, Tommy. All right, everybody. Number one, we already talked about this, but Annette Benning slams conservatives for dem, de, dem, demagoguing. Demagoguing. De, de, demagoguing. Yeah. Demagoguing. Demi, demagoguing. By the way, Mama Kim's Minutes by Nick. Yeah, you forgot that. Oh. Who's the intern now, well, bitch? that's because I said thank you, Tommy. <laughs> thank you, Tommy. So he could stop sweating and take a breath. <laughs> So net betting uh, does all that shit. Okay, we already talked about it. Number two, California school district approves outing trans kids to parents. That's mm, fucked up. Yeah. Fuck Number three, Cali. archive activists are on a global rescue mission to save LGBTQ plus history. I cannot. Nice. Okay. All right. Moving on up. Moving on, on up. On this day in gay history, brought to you by Gay Talk 2.0 and LGBTQ podcast. We can say Mark King today. Brought to you by Mark King. There you go. <laughs> so Hallmark introduces the line, a line of same-sex wedding cards, August 21st, 2008, out of Missouri. The largest greeting card company in the U.S. based in Kansas City begins production of cards featuring rainbow hearts, two textures, and, saying, and sayings like two hearts, one promise. Words are hard, I know. I got you, girl. Some days. Kudos to Hallmark. Okay. And we're moving Applause. on. Applause. And we're moving on. <laughs> <laughs> moving on, on to our announcements. <laughs> if you love the show, make sure to subscribe, rate, and review on your favorite podcasting service. By subscribing, you get the latest and greatest of our show delivered right to your favorite devices or web browser as soon as the episode is published. You can also support us on Patreon. With Patreon, you, our listeners, can help to support the show with a pledged donation the donations are collected monthly and can be in any denomination of a dollar or more and she didn't even drink today i know <laughs> well i'm, I'm on meds <laughs> <laughs> is it my turn now no jay uh, jay not, he's not got a lot all of a sudden I'm all of a sudden i'm important 
my intro. We got to get a better intro. Than you, girl. <laughs> I love that intro. I think it's just it's so perfect. Anyway, go for it. Next week, we welcome Peter DeWitt, founder of Gay Wellness, an online platform that connects clients with quality gay massage therapists and wellness practitioners. We are more than just a directory. We are a hub for connection and learning in a friendly, growth-oriented environment. I love it. I Crushed think I'm going to try it. Crushed. And, of, of course, she forwarded this over to me, so I, I have to read it from here because I can't access my notes with this. Anyway, uh, thank you to our guests, the one and only Mark S. King, the award-winning blogger, author, speaker, and HIV activist uh, who joined us on today's show. Absolutely amazing. It's huge, if I say so myself. If you want more information on Mark, you can visit markSking.com. Uh, obviously, he also men mentioned a website earlier, um, but uh, all of the information that you will need will be on that website, including the info for his book, any upcoming events, and anything else. If you want him to come and speak at any engagements that you may have, which I think it's an amazing idea to do something for work. I think I'm going to leverage that. Um, mm. because I think it would be amazing, um, you know, to have the conversation <laughs> for, for the pride group at work. Yeah. I think it would be a great opportunity for a speakership to have them come in and do a virtual thing for our, our, our coworkers. Dear Elsie. Dear future <laughs> husband, there's a few things you need to know if. Don't touch my board. Thank you, Tom. All right, everybody. Get the Future Method and all other products today. All products are doctor developed. You can clean out your clean out now without hurting your bum. Take confidence anywhere with the anal powder packs. And now increase your stretch goals with the three-piece anal glass dilation kit. Visit futuremethod.com to purchase your life-changing bum accessory today. All right, we're going to try this. We're going to try this. All right, if you need to reach out to us, just head on over to our website and click on the Contact Us tab at the top of your web browser. This there. bitch. What? Did I miss something? Jay? Oh, Lord. What, what did I miss? Time to put a ring on it. Uh, oh, 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 and let's oh. let's backpedal a little bit. Tom got really ahead of himself today. Our show is available on our website, gaytalk20.com, under audio podcast. It is also available as a free download on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Stitcher Radio. Nick, over to you. All right. You can find us on social media, Facebook, Gay Talk 2.0, Instagram, Gay Talk 2.0. You can email us at gaytalk2.0 at gaytalk20.com. Tom, Tom, now. <laughs> you can take it away. You need to away. reach out to us. Just head on over to our website and click on the Contact Us tab there. Um, you can leave comments, you can suggest topics, you can submit a question for the cast or for one of these individual bitches because I hate them Meow. and they must die. I'm kidding. You can also call us and leave us any questions you might have via voice message and you can do so by calling 334-GAY-TALK. And if you need all of those digits, it is 334-429-8255. Ladies and gents, that is our show. Thank you. And y'all have a good night. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of Gay Talk 2.0. Tune in next time for more dish.